Hi, welcome back to CV and 305. Today we are going to look into the details of how um, beams are modeled. We are going to now look into how similar the modeling is between um, how we model beams and how we model uh, beams under bending and how we model beams under torsion. So if you remember, as you can see in the figure, for torsion, we started out with a circular. So let me write this down because this is important. So, so that we know where we are. So we started out with a circular cross section rod and we decided that our axis was going to be like this, right? This is the center. And what we did was if I picked a line that's way up here on top of this thing, this is the before picture. The after picture was that the line became a helix. So I'm going to try and see if I can draw that like that. And the angle of twist was called delta phi. That is the difference in rotation between the two ends. Okay, so that's the difference in rotation. You can see the, the, the line kind of wraps around and we have done this many, many times. I'm just trying to repeat so that we make sure we understand. Our notation was the torque in the direction of angle of twist is positive like I showed and we found that the shear strain is uh, gamma equals delta phi r over delta L. This is delta L and the rotation is axial twist, right? Then we found shear stress equals tau equals g times gamma and then we found that torque relation is um, delta phi equals t delta l over gj this is tl over gj and the last thing was we saw that um, also tau equals tr over j where j is the section modulus or the cross-sectional moment of inertia, polar moment of inertia of the cross-section. So these were the four major results. Okay, if you take a beam and instead of twisting it axial, now I take rectangular cross-section beam So our axis goes this way, this is the x direction, that's the y direction, that's the z direction. So instead of, instead of rotating around the x axis, which is torque, instead of doing that, we rotate around the z axis. Okay, so if you remember uh, approximately what it means is that here is my beam, I grab it like this, if I rotate it like this around the x axis, that's torque. If I rotate it like this around the z-axis, that's bending. Okay. And basically what I want to do is I want to make the beam smile, so to speak. You know what I mean? So that's the smile on the beam and that's called bending. Of course, you can make the beam frown. So this is the smile. It makes it into a cup. Frown uh, makes it into a dome. The cup shape, the smile is the positive shape. The dome is a negative shape. So that's our sign convention. Right, and our notation is I am going to apply moments like that. Okay, and I'm going to move this a little bit down so that I can show you the corresponding thing. So I'm going to grab this and move it down a little bit so that we can see all the corresponding stuff. I'm going to erase this portion. I should have drawn it a little bit further down rather than so high. But 
I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to take it here. This is the center line and you can see how it converts it into a smile. And if I pull these two lines together, you will get transverse rotation. And this is called delta theta. This is the corresponding thing like delta phi, like this. Okay, delta theta is difference in transverse rotation. of B. That's delta theta. Okay, just like delta phi is difference in axial rotation. Delta theta is difference in transverse rotation. And the length of the beam is delta L. And what I'm going to show you is that the exact counterpart to these things show up. First thing that will show up is axial strain will look like minus delta theta y over l. And I'll tell you what this y and l are, but it's exactly this counterpart to delta phi r over delta l. So now you will get delta theta y over delta l. The stress will turn out to be sigma, axial stress will turn out to be sigma equal to e times ax axial strain that's the counterpart to this. So like if I call this equation one, this will be equation one prime. If this is equation two, this will be equation two prime. And then the, the moment relation will look like m equals, so this is mz because it's around the z axis, can you see? That's the moment direction. It's like that. If the z-axis, that my thumb points along the z direction. So that's the z-axis. So the z-axis is coming out of the board and that's my moment. So mz will turn out to be, let's see, I want to make sure I use the same notation. So I want to, because I want to show you absolute parallel. So it's going to be this delta theta equals mz delta L over E i. This is three prime. What is three? Let us make sure it's that delta T delta phi is T L over G J is three. Okay. And now I get delta theta equal to M Z delta L over E i. And I'll talk to you about what is meant by i and all of that. But I want you to see how parallel the formulae are. And the last thing I will get is sigma equals minus m y over i. This is the counterpart to tau equals p r over j. So let's write these two things in parallel so that and you know I'm, I'm beating this point to death because I want you to see there's no difference. It's just some minor changes. Okay. So I'm going to write this here torsion So the measure is, um, so let's write all of th uh, three of them so that we can see all three. So I'm going to write this down here because this is important for you to see the parallel. So we got ax axial shear torsion. Bending. So before shape like that, before shape like that, before shape like that, before shape like that. This is before. After it looks like thinner and longer and this distance is called delta u. This will become 
like that and this distance is called delta v. This will become, if I draw a line here, this will become like that and that's called delta phi and then this will smile and that's called delta theta. So the names are axial extension, transverse extension or shear. This is called twist, this is called bend or transverse rotation. Notice that these two are related because they are both axial, these two are related because they are both transverse. Okay, so our notation says epsilon xx is delta u over delta l, gamma xy is delta v over delta l, De gamma is delta phi r over delta l, epsilon xx is minus delta theta y over delta l. Then stress sigma xx equal to e times epsilon xx, tau equal to g times gamma, tau equal to g times gamma, sigma x equal to e times epsilon xx. I will show you why we get all this. Don't worry about it. Right now I want you to see the parallel. The next one is delta u equal to f delta l over ea. This was our flea formula. This one says delta v equal to f delta l over ga. This one will tell you the delta phi equals uh, T delta L over G J and then this one will tell you delta theta equal to M delta L over E I. You can also write sigma xx equal to F over A force over area tau equal to F over A force over area again here. Here I will get tau equal to TR over J and here I will get sigma equals minus MY over I. This matrix I would strongly urge you to memorize this. This is easy to memorize. It's the same stuff over and over again, right? And you should be able to actually recreate this matrix of all these uh, results because these, this is what the whole of strength of materials is about. And then after that, there are some minor things, but this is what the whole of strength of materials is about. So we already seen how we get this. We already seen how we get this. We already seen how we get this. Now we are going to work on this. Okay, so let's start working on this, okay? So that's what we're going to do next.